Good morning, Michelle Saxman here, and ready to share with you some time, Proverbs 6. And this reflection is being guided by Hope Church of Richmond, and I'll put the link down below if you want to follow along. The highlighted verse for today, Proverbs 6, verse 9. But you, lazy bones, how long will you sleep? When will you wake up? I don't know about you, but a verse like that is hard for me to read. If someone who can resemble a sloth at times, I am someone who can resemble a sloth at times. It can be hard for me to find motivation when I'm tired and need rest. But rest is important. But the question remains, when will I wake up? What a beckoning question it is. It's starting to make me think it's not about how many hours of sleep I got last night. I hear Jesus calling my name, trying to get my attention. It's more like a gentle nudge than it is a startling wake-up call. It's my dear friend Jesus rubbing my shoulder to whisper, wake up. You guys, this isn't even about waking up in our earthly form. This is about waking up in our spiritual form because we are called to a day of rest. That is what the Sabbath is. So let's go ahead and get on with Proverbs 6. My son, if you have put up security for your neighbor, if you have struck hands in pledge of another, if you have been trapped by what you said, ensnared by the words of your mouth, then do this, my son, to free yourself. Since you have fallen into your neighbor's hands, go and humble yourself. Press your plea with your neighbor. Allow no sleep in your eyes, no slumber to your eyelids. Free yourself like a gazelle from the hand of a hunter, like a bird from the snare of the fowler. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler, yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a bandit and scarcity like an armed man a scoundrel and villain who goes about with a corrupt mouth, who winks with his eyes, signals with his feet, and motions with his fingers, who plots evil with deceit in his heart. He always serves up dissension. Therefore, disaster will overtake him in an instant. He will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. There are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a man who stirs up dissension among his brothers. My son, keep your father's commands and do not forsake your mother's teach them. Bind them upon your heart forever. Fasten them around your neck. When you walk, they will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. When you awake, they will speak to you. For these commands are a lamp. This teaching is a light and the corrections of discipline are the way of life, keeping you from the immoral woman with a smooth tongue of the wayward wife. Do not lust in your heart after her beauty or let her captivate you with her eyes. For the prostitute reduces you to a loaf of bread, and the adulteress preys upon your very life. Can a man scoop fire into his lap without his clothing being burned? Can a man walk on hot coals without his feet being scorched? So he who sleeps with another man's wife, no one touches her, will go unpunished. Men do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his hunger when he is starving. Yet if he is caught, he must pay sevenfold, though it cost him all the wealth of his house. But a man who commits adultery lacks judgment. Whoever does so destroys himself. Blows and, dis blows and disgrace are his lot, and his shame will never be wiped away. For jealousy arouses a husband's fury, and he will show no mercy when he takes revenge. He will not accept any compensation. He will refuse the bride, however great it is. 
a couple of things in this one. And when I think about this truly being adultery of man and woman and marriage and that sort of thing, I think that there's even another level of deceit here that we know that in our human form, we can be dis, uh, seduced by our eyes, by what we are seeing. So I'm gonna ask you to start there with what is your gaze upon? What is the external thing that you believe that you desire? And um, this was coming from another podcast that the having versus the being and having is, accumul is accumulating things from the outside. What we desire is to be in love, to be in relationship, to be in connection. And sometimes in our earthly form, we think that that is about having sex, having relations, and it is not. This level of connection and desire is an inside job. It is not about satisfying the things that through our five senses. And that to me is really what this reminder is that we need to have this sense of internal peace. He talks about dissension. So I just wanna think about disintegration versus integration, dissension versus peace. So when we are going down this wayward path, we are gonna be tempted and taunted necessary, maybe, but that is when we need to learn to listen to our body and listen to the internal dialogue, what tape is being played. Because sometimes people take these steps because they have justified some sort of behavior. Someone did this to me, I'm going to do it back. You guys, we are justified just as if I'd never sinned in his eyes. His mercy and grace are greater than anything we can acquire. So this is about sitting in time, um, warnings against folly and stepping off that path and waking up, waking up in our spirit to his words and his wisdom. So y'all have a super blessed day. Stay connected to the vine and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.